details and bring some new insights. So the two presentations are linked in this way. Uh, you know, in medicine, from time to time, we need some new ideas, some new concepts. And for a long time, we had the metabolic syndrome, we had Framingham risk score, and people just want to know new things and to try to understand pathophysiology of cardiovascular disease early stages, because if we can understand that, we can also uh, intervene earlier. For example, in families uh, at high risk of cardiovascular disease. This is a painting from Sweden. It illustrates the life course. It tells us that we all are climbing the stairs. It's unavoidable. We cannot stop this, but we can try to understand why some people age differently. Some stay healthy until a high age, however, other people experience early onset cardiovascular disease and we wonder why. Another very important thing is that it all starts here in childhood. We have all been children, we all undergo aging, and if we cannot understand the biology linked to this, we will not be able to understand cardiovascular disease because cardiovascular disease is linked to aging. Already in the 17th century, Thomas Sydenham told that a man is as old as his arteries. And I think you know very well that uh, uh, to uh, investigate the pulse rate, and the pulse is an old uh, the component of a physical examination. <coughs> we know that age and aging is linked to chronic disease uh, conditions, especially cardiovascular disease. Some people will experience early onset cardiovascular disease. Uh, a few days ago I went to Moscow and you know in some parts of Russia uh, they have very high cardiovascular risk rates. And I, I'm, I have joined a project in Moscow to, to investigate early vascular aging in some of the patients uh, in this Russian setting because many of them have a very high cardiovascular risk. So we examine our arterial stiffness, tell me a length, other factors. For decades, uh, researchers have been uh, uh, focused on atherosclerosis, plaque formation, plaque rupture, inflammation, and finally, the cardiovascular events. However, now we learn that early on there is this stiffness process going on. This is linked to increased uh, central blood pressure and that starts early. As you might know, um, the blood pressure in the arm, the brachial blood pressure, is higher in young people as compared to the central blood pressure. But in some young people at increased risk, for example, from families at increased risk, we believe that the central blood pressure will increase very early upon. So this is a marker of the process, hand in hand with early arterial stiffness. So if we can find these subjects from families at increased risk, for example, we can offer them early intervention. But first of all, we have to screen for the risk factors and especially arterial stiffness. That is why we need simple devices and new methods to do that. You know, for almost a hundred years, we have been misled to think that blood pressure is something in the arm. Of course, we can measure it in the arm, but it's quite understandable that the central blood pressure is much more important. It's closer to the heart, to the kidneys, to the brain, and that is why we should try to learn much more about central hemodynamics and arterial stiffness because they are independent of each other. That is why new uh, devices can bring us new knowledge to, to uh, investigate this especially young people from the families of high cardiovascular risk. I mentioned that everything starts very early, a fetal growth recitation, small gestational age babies, uh, with a later on uh, rapid catch-up growth in early life. This is a riskful combination, we believe. I know that my friends in, in uh, Zagreb, in Croatia, Mario sitting here, you are running projects to investigate this, very important. Um, we believe that uh, 
early uh, life factors could influence, for example, the, the elastin content of the anterior wall. If there is less elastin, uh, it will uh, uh, have a more rapid uh, uh, loss or uh, breakdown, and that will increase the risk of anterior stiffness, linking early life growth patterns with later life anterior stiffness and less elastin content. So what is masquerading? Many different things are seen here. Uh, the stiffening process, less elastin, collagen, cross linkages, increased pulse pressure, and the central hemodynamics, increased pulse wave velocity, uh, but also glycation of vessel wall proteins, endothelial dysfunction, decreased NO production, oxidative stress, local perivascular inflammation, capillary rarification, less capillaries. And this is another link to early life programming because in growth retarded babies it has been shown that they have less capillaries and that will impact on peripheral vascular resistance. Also dysfunction. Telomere shortening, it's complicated to understand this, we don't understand everything, but we think that this is more or less a marker of the aging process. And all these things are increased in hypertension and diabetes. There is even one international society, the Artery Society, uh, bringing people together to discuss these things. Next meeting will be held in Maastricht, the Netherlands, in October this year. I think uh, uh, Dragan already told you about the pulse wave form, pulse wave analysis. Uh, we can uh, try to examine the pulse wave and to learn more about central hemodynamics. Because central hemodynamics are linked to anterior stiffness, and normally we measure that uh, across the aorta. There is the direct method, Stigmoko, Cochlear. There is the indirect method, for example, anterior graph. And, and we need the data for prediction of future events. Uh, so both methods are, are useful in different settings and, and we should learn uh, about the pathophysiology of the uh, early onset uh, cardiovascular disease by looking into central hemodynamics and to arterial stiffness. The reflex wave pattern uh, will, uh, uh, will produce an adverse effect on the coronary circulation, less perfusion, uh, pressure here in the coronary uh, circulation and increased systolic peak here uh, leading to uh, left ventricular hypertrophy. So the arterial stiffness process is dangerous because the reflex wave will return much earlier leading to left ventricular hypertrophy and impact coronary circulation. This is on the track to angina pectoris and myocardial infarction. I think you mentioned about this uh, European collaboration. Uh, within a set of uh, more than 16,000 subjects, almost 1,500 healthy normotensive subjects were selected to show the normal range of uh, arterial stiffness, pulse velocity in this European sample. Uh, here you see uh, the normal range, uh, standard deviation, and please focus on the subjects up here because they are above two standard deviations. And this means that uh, they have early vascularity because arterial stiffness is so pronounced. So if we have such reference materials, we can compare local materials, for example, from Serbia, from Sweden, from Croatia, from other countries, because this is a European database uh, so we can compare what is normal and what is outside the normal range. Uh, the most recent meta-analyses uh, for prediction of cardiovascular events by analyzing uh, arterial stiffness is this by Ben Shomo. I think you had it on your slide too. I just wanted to show you that this is most pronounced in the middle-aged population, less in the elderly. Why? There might be uh, a 
selection survival bias in the elderly, but I think that this early vascular aging, early biological aging is more pronounced in younger people. The, the, the spread, the difference, uh, the variation is more pronounced because if we reach an old age, all of us, we, we resemble each other. We look more or less the same in biology, but in mid-age there is more of a difference between normal aging and premature aging. And this is why a stiffness, increased pathway velocity, is especially uh, a marked independent risk uh, marker here in the middle age population. This is a slide from a poster abstract of the ESH Milan meeting last summer. By use of the arterial graph, a cohort has been uh, established more than 4,146 uh, subjects uh, for prediction of cardiovascular events, 241 events, and as shown here, aortic pathway velocity uh, calculated indirectly with this method is able to predict uh, future events. So, a simple method can also be used for this prediction. And this information has long been awaited because different methods should be put to the test if they are able to predict events. So, now we know there are different methods. This is a simple method, it can predict events, and that it is useful. Still waiting for a full publication. Just a few words about uh, family factors. On this slide you see a group of patients with early onset coronary artery disease uh, below 55 years of age uh, as compared to controls. This is the risk to have increased pathway velocity and you see that there is a difference versus the controls. But also the relatives of these patients, they have increased risk of arterial stiffness. This means that there must be some genetic factors in the background and tomorrow I will come into more details. Vascular aging is also linked to cognitive aging, brain aging, and I think it's very important for us to understand that early cognitive decline is something to take seriously because later on it can develop into dementia. Please remember that the cerebral cortex, the gray matter, is something important for memory. And memory tests are able to show memory function. However, the white matter is deeper in the brain, and if there is an impairment of white matter brain function, this will not be detected by memory tests. Other tests for speed, cognition, and executive function are more sensitive to these damages in the white matter uh, uh, area. Arterial stiffness, hypertension, is linked to cerebrovascular dementia, yes, but an early uh, stage, this is white matter lesions. Uh, some studies have been able to show that uh, there is uh, an association between uh, the change in one of the tests, FNSE, for memory function, cognitive function, uh, the higher the pathway velocity, arterial stiffness, the more rapid is the decline. So this is why if we treat hypertension, arterial stiffness, we can also, we believe, prevent cognitive decline and later on dementia. More studies are needed. One observational study uh, came from Iceland when they use different method methodologies to compare data on arterial stiffness, cognitive function, and magnetic resonant imaging of the brain. But shown here, there was an association between herotic femoral pathway velocity, arterial stiffness, and prevalence of subcortical infarcts in the white matter of the brain, also impaired cognitive function. So this is why vascular aging links to cognitive aging. Finally, 
a few months ago, I published together with some colleagues a review in Journal of Hypertension on early vascular aging, bringing different aspects together. If you are interested to, to, to read it, send me an email, I send you a PDF. This is about the cross talk between the large and the small arteries. In my presentation tomorrow, I will go more into details because then I will discuss hemodynamic aging. The modern thinking is that EBA vascular aging is about morphology, morphological changes in the arterial wall. But the physiological consequences I call hemodynamic aging. And they are linked, of course they are. So tomorrow I will go more into detail. It starts with the morphological changes, but what we can measure is also hemodynamic consequences. Finally, of course we should uh, uh, try to change uh, early vasculating, because here is normal vasculating, here is early vasculating, and if we can find some preventing methods, I call that ADAM, aggressive decrease of atherosclerosis, modifies risk factor control. This is a way to change the course. And we should start early, risk factor control, lifestyle intervention, yes. But there is also a need to look for new drugs because some of the established methods are not functioning uh, in an optimal way. This was a disappointment. The Look Ahead trial published a few months ago in obese patients with type 2 diabetes, intensive lifestyle intervention with weight loss was not successful as compared to controls. You see, no difference. Some people think this was because they stopped it too late. Patients had diabetes for many, many years. Many of them were put on statins, so maybe the added effect of lifestyle intervention could not show itself. But nevertheless, it was not successful. So we need some new methods, new understanding. And just to tell you about recent development, I think you know about the renin angiotensin system. There is the angiotensin II, 81 receptor that we block with the sartans. And then there is a spillover effect on the good receptor, the 82 receptor, with all the nice things to, to counteract vascular aging. Now some researchers have tried to find a new drug. It's called Compound 21. It's a specific angiotensin 2 82 receptor agonist to push the button push the receptor to bring all the good things. This year, they are moving from animal studies to human studies. So if it works, we will see. And maybe there will be uh, vascular protection to be combined with more established drugs, anti drugs, and so on. So, but we need something new. So in summary, I told you about EVA, the short introduction, Early life programming is important, and um, this arterial stiffness, we believe, precedes atherosclerosis, plaque formation, and clinical events. That is why we, we would like to find the patients early. Of course, in this early uh, stage, you will see fatty streaks. You will see very early changes for atherosclerosis, but these are not visible yet. However, arterial stiffness is possible to detect. Central hemodynamics could help us, and if we find the right patients, we can help. Hemodynamic aging, I will come back to tomorrow, and treatment of EVA includes, of course, what we know today, but also uh, a quest for new drugs, destiffening drugs, and uh, drugs for vascular protection. Thank you very much. Thank you.